Guys, I'm telling you, I'm keeping it. I'm keeping it a book. If you want to live that stress free, nine nine caring life, get a job. Yeah, for sure. For those that have jobs, you think a job is stressful? Multiply that by a hundred for entrepreneurship. Because at the end of the day, if you're an entrepreneur, you can't blame nobody else for nothing, and you can't turn the go to nobody else for nothing. Mm-hmm. At a job, you could get you could get mad at Sharon. You could blame something on Sharon. Man, Sharon did this. Mm-hmm. Man, why they? I see see them on the email. Is it you're an entrepreneur? No matter what happens or who messes something up, or if they did something they want, it comes back to you. It's crowded at the top. What's it about? It's about abundance. It's about getting to a certain height and dropping a rope and pulling somebody else up with you and continuing to do so the higher that you climb. Look, I've been able to do this in my business with just one digital product and I'm passing a plug. That's how they were able to do this. Shout out to my man, Blake Sanford. I made 1K in less than 12 hours just because I went on the IG Live, he gave out some game and I actually implemented it. So long story short, saw Blake on IG, seemed authentic, you know, spent four hours of my life to make 29 grand. You know, if you sit, follow the plan, you know, with everything that Blake has set up, you'll make money. So I'm scrolling through Instagram and I see this guy, Blake. I saw the price and I was like, man, ain't no way. And no lie, step by step, it's got videos, it's got uh, everything that I needed to do my first deal and made $12,000. I was able to lock in my first deal, 13 and a half thousand. Man, we going up. This is only the beginning. Shout out to you, Ashton CEO. Trying to make it crowded at the top. Keep going, man. I'll see everybody there. There's enough for everybody to eat. So look, if you're an entrepreneur looking to get to the next level and grow your business online, click the link in the description and tap in. Instantly get access to all my courses, trainings, resources, and systems, plus weekly calls with myself so I can personally help you along the way and a network of tons of other entrepreneurs that you can network with, partner with, and profit with. I want you to check it out and see if it's the place that you need to be to grow. All right. So click the link in the description, tap in, and I will see you on a mastermind call this Wednesday. It's crowded at the top. Now let's get into the episode. Episode. Welcome to another episode of It's Crowded at the Top. I'm your host, Aston CEO. I got the voice of God on the other side with me. Hey, hallelujah. Peace and always blessings, beautiful people. Say, I'm stressed out so long. Hmm. My days, what Jesus said. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I want to talk about. I want to talk about the. I want to talk about something that no, I feel like nobody. I won't say nobody talks about it online, but I know nobody in the entrepreneurial space talks about it online. I can't think of one person that talks business, that talks entrepreneurship. I'm not in the. I don't consider myself in the investment world, but even the people that are in the investment world as far as creating content and stuff they never talk about the stressful side of it right and i feel like a lot of entrepreneurs and aspiring entrepreneurs and especially beginning entrepreneurs they get way more stressed out because they don't realize that everybody's dealing with the same shit Mm -hmm. and if they're more advanced than you starting off they're dealing with it on a way higher magnitude mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> than your beginner self is feeling. Yep. So it's like you feel like the world's about to crumble. You feel like you can't get it right. I'm like, these people that have generated hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands or millions and millions or tens of millions mm-hmm. or, or cents of millions, hundreds of millions, you think they not dealing with it too? Right. Because the first first thing that came to mind is like, like the beginning entrepreneur. Let's say somebody quit and went all in. They might be thinking about like, man, I don't know, I'm gonna make like enough to pay rent. And then you got the other entrepreneur on the, on the higher levels, like, I don't know, I'm gonna make payroll. <laughs> like, it's it's different. Yeah. It's like it's like if you're just starting off, your stuff and stuff that you have it lined stuff you have on the line 
it's minimum to none. Mm. It might be your beginning investment that you put into yourself, which if you're just starting out, it could just be a few hundred dollars to a few thousand dollars. Mm. And it's like if stuff don't work out with you or if this doesn't go right, it's like you're still in a position to where you could just start something else up real quick mm-hmm. versus that person that's far along. I won't even say far far along, but really got to a point where some things are working and then say if they get some things that aren't working, they got a lot on the line that they could lose. They don't. They done, say if they got a a business where they actually have inventory, they got inventory that they already done bought, Mm -hmm. that they haven't had a chance to unload. So so you got that cost and whatever the holding costs are associated to that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, payroll, like you said, the beginning entrepreneur, they may be worried about, you know, how they going to pay this bill or something, whereas these people, they worried about how you going to pay your staff. Mm Mm-hmm. Cause I've heard stories, I've heard stories from people to where it's like, you got 10, 15 people and you literally have no way to pay them. Say they all get paid on, on Friday. You literally have no way to pay mm-hmm. nobody. Mm-hmm. I was listening to Alex Hormozzi. He was telling a story. He had a, he had a hundred something thousand that needed to be paid out. Like, in a week or something and he had no means to do it. Mm-hmm. Like that's a that's a different level of stress. But people don't talk about this stuff right. though. Right. And then that beginning entrepreneur, they'll be looking at stuff from a fucked up perspective and being way too hard on themselves because everybody else just shows their wins. Mm-hmm. So you don't think that people are having the problems that you're having. Right. When they are, and they're having them on a on a way bigger magnitude. My question would be But don't nobody but don't nobody talk about it though. My question would be, do you think that if if the bigger magnitude if there's if there's too much of a gap between where you are in comparison to the bigger magnitude, do you think that you might like not resonate with that struggle because it's like you can't even comprehend it. Like if if Alex Hermosi was sharing a story about how he millions of dollars got to do this and like you over here like worried about five hundred dollars for a Facebook ad campaign or something like that. Do you think that big gap is like not even gonna touch you? Nah, I think it could touch you because the people that beginner entrepreneurs listen to they look at them as if they're here Mm -hmm. if those people that they perceive to be here told their stories about when they were here Mm. yeah okay yeah yeah it would but nobody does that shit because it's one of the 48 laws of power you gotta like make shit look effortless Mm -hmm. i can't remember which number law it is but that's one of the 48 laws of power i recommend y'all read that book a lot of people think it's an evil book but I'm like, what's evil can be good too. Mm-hmm. Like murder's evil, but but you have but you got no problem living in America. We couldn't live here unless somebody pushed the button and murdered some people. Right. Like I'm just saying, like everything could be perceived one way or the other. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like for as much I know we love Obama. Take politics out of it. You know, Obama seemed like he the cool one. Like everybody loved Obama. Especially us. Obama was dropping bombs yeah. a lot them eight years. Yeah, for sure. He done, he dropped Obama pushed the button more than more than them two other guys <laughs> that came after him. Yeah, I feel like Obama was like. Do they not know who I am? <laughs> and then just like y'all <laughs> fucking with me, <laughs> like with no no regard, no remorse. Like y'all <laughs> fucking with the West, <laughs> West Side. <laughs> you won't talk about a real East Coast, West Coast, man. But but for people to to love them, 
to live lives that they want to live, a lot of bad stuff had to happen. Mm -hmm. But we would look at it, you know, we see somebody, we'll see somebody that looks like us get murdered on social media, uproar. But when we hear about some other people that may look like us in different shades getting murdered and it's just a, a, a gas price went down mm-hmm. or a, a job openings or it's just a headline of we won, we got them. Mm-hmm. It's like, yeah. Right. But you don't think about the, uh, yeah, we got them. You don't think about the person I got in mind right now that they, that was like one of his biggest push the buttons that we got. They, they got them in front of his kids. Mm. Yeah. Like just think of who the biggest threat to America was during his presidency. Mm-hmm. I heard the dude telling a story who popped them. It was like his kid was right there and he scooped them up afterwards. Like, don't nobody think about that. Like, it's still people and stuff. Yeah. But we'd be like, ah, yeah. I know I'm going, I'm going some different places with it. Like, really? Dick? <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> but it's like I said, those people that a beginner entrepreneur deems to be here tells their stories of here. Like, yeah, you may not be able to deal with the story like I I told of Alex Hormozzi when he's he said he had a hundred thousand dollars and something that need to be paid out literally like in a week or something and he had no way to do it. That's a beginner's story because mm-hmm. people that haven't haven't um dealt in those numbers and stuff, they feel like that's a lot. When it may sound crazy coming out of my mouth right now, but it's not right, really. But you don't realize it's not a lot until you've accumulated a dealt, played around with those mm-hmm. those type of numbers, right? Mm-hmm. But the other side of that is, say, and a lot of people probably haven't heard that story, but for the people that I do know that's heard that story. They missed pieces from when Hormozzi told their story. He had a payment processor got shut down. Mm-hmm. So his problem was that he had a hundred something in payments to collect and no way to process them. Mm-hmm. So his problem was a little different. He still knew if he could just find some type of way to get a his payments process, he got a hundred something thousand sitting right here. Mm-hmm. So that's a little different than, but people hear that and be like, oh, he had a hundred thousand. He needed the old hundred thousand. And he came up with a, he came up with an offer and generated leads and made the hundred real quick. Like, no, he had the, right. he had the hundred something thousand in money he needs to collect like right here. Mm-hmm. His payment processor got shut down. Yeah, I heard that story before too. So he went and he got some some type of loan or something, and he felt comfortable get, going to get the uh, not a loan. He put it on credit card, and he felt comfortable putting it on the credit card because you got the like you know for a fact you got this mm-hmm. sitting right here. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a little different, but people will hear pieces of the story and be like, "Oh, he just man, he figured out how to make a hundred in a in a week." That's his 92 brick store. <laughs> <laughs> but the but the stress thing though, I just want you, I just want people to realize that when you sign up, when you sign up to be an entrepreneur, you're signing up for a life of constant stress. Mm-hmm. I don't think you're ever going to get to the where you're just sipping pina coladas with the watching sunsets. Right on beaches like social media makes you think it is. And the people make you think that because they're selling you something. Mm-hmm. If they told you their struggles, if they told you uh, that their mental health is in a bad state, if they told you that their physical bodies 
are in a bad state and literally deteriorating because of the stresses of the mind that turns physical, mm -hmm. you wouldn't want to buy what they got to sell. Yep. So everybody got to look like they're just having the best time all the time. Mm -hmm. It's great. <laughs> yeah. Look at my life. Look at these clothes. Look at my watch. Look at the car. It's great. Mm -hmm. Nah, they gotta, they gotta, they gotta, for one, and I know some of these guys, for one, they gotta keep portraying a lifestyle that they don't live because they put it out there to get sales. Mm -hmm. And for two, they gotta constantly, in business, you always have to be generating revenue, but they gotta constantly be going to get that sale to upkeep. Mm -hmm. The look at this watch, look at these clothes, look at this car. Mm -hmm. Type of stuff. There's a one guy that comes to mind. You would you would swear he drives a Lamborghini. He drives a he drives a Charger. <laughs> I know he drives a Charger. Yeah. I know him. Yeah. He went on a trip. He rented a Lambo for like two three days. I'm like, dang, you shot a lot of content with that. Because for two years, you, it looks like you drive yeah. that Lambo that yeah. you rented for that weekend. He made it. Or he, just re, or he just keeps repurposing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And maybe I, I just see it because I know him. I'm like, well, I don't follow him no more. But I'll be like, people not seeing you in the... Same three outfits every time you got on. <laughs> every time you in the Lambo and you like the same palm trees, like y'all don't drive nowhere else. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's tough, man. You that's just tough. in my, you just in Miami with it. That's the thing, bro. I never want to build a life for myself or port portray a life for myself that I gotta, I gotta keep up. Like that just seemed like a lot, man. But the thing is, is that. Some of the things that he's accomplished, it's like very, very few people have done it. Mm -hmm. You could show that and be cool. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I mean? People want to buy apartment complexes. Right. This guy has complexes, plural. Mm hmm Show that. Yeah, but that doesn't it come back to the, like the um what we talked about in the past about like people ain't gonna pay attention unless they see the shiny thing. The shiny thing can be your apartment complexes. Yeah. The the example that we talked about in the past was when I used in the past, y'all, I shot advertisements. I shot some Facebook ads in the past coming off as like the regular person and you can do this too. And I had my old beat up car right there. Mm -hmm. Is that what you're referring to? No, I'm and not. I I'm not that were no, I'm not referring to that in particular. I'm just referring to like conversations we've had, like, like what we've mentioned, like, for example, like Wale, you know, he rapped about it where, you know. Yeah. Yeah. But let me get back to the car thing. Then I'll yeah. go to that. Look, exposure equals expansion. And for you to get to the next level, you need to get in the room. So go ahead, click the link in the description and tap in and get instant access to all of my resources, trainings, and systems. Weekly calls with myself and a network of other entrepreneurs for you to network with, partner with, and profit with. I want you to be 100% comfortable in knowing that this is the place that you need to be to grow as an entrepreneur. All right? So click the link in the description, tap in, and I will see you on our mastermind call this Wednesday. And also, are you getting value from this video so far? If so, let me know in the comments, all right? Now let's get back to it. Yo, Jarvis, close the mask. I made these ads and I had like my old Jeep. It was a 2000 Jeep Grand Cherokee Laredo. Road to the wheels fall off. Like it didn't start all the time because the gear shift was messed up. Mm -hmm. I played on that in the ad too. Like sometimes the car would think it's in part, but it's not actually in part. So the car won't start. So I have to put it in neutral to start it. 
The ad converted terribly, bro. Yeah. Like, because people are looking at it and they're like, why would I want to be you? Mm-hmm. The ads that worked good, I had my shiny thing. My shiny thing was that ad would have worked or using that old Jeep would have worked if I showed my success with it. I didn't show nothing that you could tangibly see. Right. right? It was just, hey, I'm telling you how to do this. Look at my car. You can do it too. <laughs> if I would have showed that and then showed $22,000 I just made, mm-hmm. that would have worked. Yeah. If I showed that and showed uh, and showed five testimonials of people making f- their first five figures in a month, having their first $10,000 $10, a month, it would have worked. Mm-hmm. So taking it back to where you said, don't you need a shiny thing? That's why I said his complexes could be the shiny thing because my shiny thing that I figured out that worked is showing your results. Mm-hmm. So yeah, you do need to have a shiny thing, but he thinks his shiny thing needs to be the look how, look at my lifestyle because mm-hmm. he sees all these other people, like I said, Fraud and like everything's just great all the damn time. Mm-hmm. And saying your life can be great all the time too. That's why a lot of people be upset with products that they buy from people, especially in the educational space, because they they didn't sign up to get results. They signed up to get a lifestyle. Mm-hmm. And then they get mad that you thought that you bought this $400 course. You thought that was going to give you the lifestyle that this person. You're right. Like, ain't no $400 court, y'all. Ain't no $400 court. Ain't no $1,490. Ain't no $1,497 course. Gonna give you the lifestyle of Lamborghinis, yachts, big, big ass, ugly shoes. <laughs> like, it, it don't do it. Yeah. That's why a lot of people, they start to, they start to, you know, say that they start to th- take some things seriously and then they go and they buy education or buy courses from people, which I'm totally not against. I sell education. I learned most of what I know from buying education and courses from other people. But people think that you buy that one thing and that one thing helps you. Right. No, that one thing teaches you things that you don't know to get you to maybe now I need to go find this thing. Mm-hmm. Now I'll go purchase that. And then that gives me the skill set to start some stuff. Then I figure out what I don't know. Then I go buy this thing to go learn it. They be thinking, so one size you bought this on. one course and mm-hmm. it's going to answer all the problems for you and just, and get you to start buying Lamborghinis. Yeah. Oh, it don't work. It don't work. Or did you just buy one thing, watch it, and sit your ass down? Right. Or you bought the one thing, tried to implement it, didn't get immediate results, and then think that the whole thing don't work when, like, no, that's a piece. Mm -hmm. That's a piece to it. Or the people that kill me, you go buy an (laughs) e-book and think that's going to be the problem, the the solution to everything. No, that e-book should be an introduction (laughs) for you to go search for some more information on the thing and then uh, another thing people do too is they actually do have success but there's a misnomer with that success because they comparing it to where they either see other people or where they thought that they should be you know what i'm saying it's like they might they might they might get the course or whatever and then mess around and be the anomaly that did seven thousand the first month or twelve thousand the first month, but they thought they were gonna do fifty five. <laughs> like, yeah, like, or, nah. or the yeah, and the and the uh, and the uh, and I just be thinking like, and part of it is on the the educator because it just be a lot of. You know, the way, the way a lot of people sell their information, you know, I'm just like morally against it. Like I wouldn't be comfortable with myself 
because a lot of the a lot of the stuff on why people perceive things are because of how they sell. Like I said, they don't they're not selling a result. Mm -hmm. They're selling the they're selling the lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Like people sign up for all these free free webinars and classes and buy this stuff. They don't they're buying it just because the, you want some material things that people keep throwing yeah. in your face versus like a, the actual result. Like when people tap into me, it be because I'm I'm results based. Mm -hmm. Like yeah, I throw some shiny stuff in there, but the shiny stuff I'm showing you is like. It might be some numbers, right? Versus, think a lot of these other guys. All they're doing is telling you what they did. Mm -hmm. They can't show you, uh, but they they show you. Well, look. Mm -hmm. Versus, I I show you like some results, right? I ain't saying you're gonna get the results neither, but I am telling you this is. It works if you work it. Yeah, results may vary <laughs> at the bottom of the screen. <laughs> but it, but it's, but it's, but it's results, right? But, but some of it, like I said, some of it could be how the people, how the people sell the stuff. But the, but to go back to the stress stuff of it, though, uh, guys, I'm telling you, I'm keeping it, I'm keeping it a book. If you want to live that stress-free, non-caring non life, get a job. Yeah, for sure. For those that have jobs, you think a job is stressful? Multiply that by 100 for entrepreneurship. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, if you're an entrepreneur, you can't blame nobody else for nothing. And you can't turn the go to nobody else for nothing. Mm -hmm. At a job, you could get... You could get mad at Sharon. You could blame something on Sharon. Man, Sharon did this. Mm -hmm. Man, why they? I see, see them on the email. Is it you're an entrepreneur? No matter what happens or who messes something up, or if they did something they want, it comes back to you. Mm -hmm. Yep. So it can be, and I don't want to scare people when I say multiply that by honey. That that's that's me gassing it. But uh, ninety eight. <laughs> no, nah, no, nah, that's that's me guessing it, and that and that could just be with just because of certain things that I'm currently going through. Why I'm like gassing it, All right? I, but I think you were spot on, bro. I, I honestly, I just think that you learn as you grow. You learn how to deal with the stresses of. Yeah, because it because it it gets to a point where you've been through it so many times. That the stress kind of becomes unstressful. Yeah. So it's like a different. It's like a different kind of stress. Mm -hmm. Because it's like you. It's like you. Uh, because I've been going through some things of of recent that I had a conversation with my pops about, and this is another thing too, y'all went. And I had a call on our call this past Wednesday. Uh, a guy by the name of Willis. We went in the, I extended the call. We was on call for this past Wednesday for like three and a half hours just because certain things he was going through, it struck a chord with me. And it happened to be on my birthday too. Because mm -hmm. he was talking about like certain stress he's having, certain places he feels like he should be for the age that he is. And it was just, I guess it just hit me because it happened to be my birthday. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I'm glad I didn't reschedule because I wasn't gonna reschedule it. I was like, nah, I committed. We doing this every single mm -hmm. Wednesday, no matter what. And and uh, and I was like, stress it. It comes. It comes with it. And it's just hard to, like I said, it's just hard to see because it just looks like everybody's just winning and so happy and making so much money all the time on social media. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, once you start to get going and you meet some people, that's why you need a circle. That's why I was like, this crowded top community is so good for him because he thinks he's the only one going through that. Mm -hmm. And then I'm like, once I opened up and gave the, the topic of the discussion as far as just like, don't think that you're the only one going through shit. 
there'd be other people. I told them certain things that's going on with me, felt comfortable opening up. And I'm mm-hmm. like, that's why it's important to have somebody somewhere that for one's going through similar things as you, so you can realize that it ain't just you. Mm-hmm. And you'd be like, oh, okay, well they they've been through this before. And especially if it's somebody that's been to some doing something longer than you or has gotten to a height that you haven't reached yet, it can make you feel like, all right, well, let me just stay the course because mm-hmm. they told me all the stuff that messed up with them or she's told me about what she done went through the, the last two quarters or something. Or he told me what messed up last quarter. Mm-hmm. So you'd be like, ah, oh, it, ain't, it ain't just me. And then two, even if it ain't somebody doing something similar as you, just have somebody to talk to. Mm-hmm. Especially as men. Yeah. And and I hate to put race in this stuff too, but I got to. Like, men got it hard, but especially black men. Because mm-hmm. it's like, we can't do shit. I sent you a message I want you to, to look at after this, but it's just like, it's funny, but it's real at the same mm-hmm. time. It's like, everything's gay. Mm-hmm. Like, he eats a banana, you get the word, gay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, he's uh, he does something. He's about to work out. He does squats. Gay, like, bro. I saw some chick post something, and she's in the fitness world too. And she was saying it's gay if a man works out on the stairmaster. Mm. And she was serious. Yeah, and I was like, yeah. I thought being gay was doing a sexual act with another man. Right. I thought that was gay. The video I sent you too, he's he's about to drink out of a straw. He's like, good. He's just like getting frustrated with it. <laughs> like with everything. He's like, what can I do? Yeah. But I know I'm joking. I'm just using that as an example. But we like it's hard for us, like it's it's hard for men to be emotional or share things, but especially like it's like you black men, you can't do nothing. Yeah. Like, like fuck. And certain things that I've been going through. I didn't realize that people that I love in my circle going through things too. And it took me finally being like, nah, I ain't like somebody be like, yo, you doing all right today? How was your day? And I, one day I just decided to say, I'm fucked up. Mm-hmm. I, ain't, I ain't good right now. Mm-hmm. All right, well, what's going on? I started to tell some stuff in there and be like, well, it should make you feel any better. Uh, don't be too much. I did. I'm going through this and blah blah blah, and then this and that. Or I even called you and mm-hmm. you told me some stuff. I was like, "Shit, I've been so much, you know, worried about my own shit. I need to start asking some other people." Just from time to time, like, you know, you straight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'd be like that though. Like we, and cause we're conditioned. Like, cause even though the the gay thing is a joke, we're conditioned that either sharing or being emotional or whatever is is soft. You soft. Mm-hmm. You can't do nothing. Like like man up. So we so we harbor like we like we harbor like when we young, we we harbor like pain, like real physical pain. And then that turns into as an adult, you harbor the emotional pain or the stress or whatever you're going through. You know what I'm saying? And then on the flip side of it, women uh, they'll sit there and say that you that that they wish men would talk more. But I'm like, but then as soon as a man opens up his phone, he sees all y'all joking on men, talking about how how y'all the harder than the men nowadays and stuff. Mm-hmm. Well, ain't no man supposed to do this. A real man would. Maybe. I guess I ain't gonna talk. I ain't gonna tell her what I'm. <laughs> she just made the because girls be girls in general are women. I don't offend nobody. And shit, right? Somebody I ain't no good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I was I was telling my I was telling the one well, my own girls this, and I was telling my cousin this, and I was like, this one girl she liked the guy, and she was saying that. He he kind of curved her because of how he thought she was based off of social media. Mm-hmm. I was like, yeah, to you, you joking. But I'm like, but people are looking at that and they're 
thinking that that's you. Right. Like, so if you up here sharing all these memes of being a city girl and she's the best person, like, probably only been with two people her whole life. Mm Mm-hmm. Got to be in a serious, committed relationship to even touch her. Like, like yeah. to like, I'm saying some extreme type stuff. But you go look at her page; it's all city girl stuff, mm-hmm. memes bashing dudes, and like. But she thinks the stuff's funny, and she shared. It. I'm like, that, but yeah, people think that's you. If I didn't know you, I would think that's you too. Right. So I'm like, and even though even the women that don't think like that, they might even just be joking online and say that. And it's just like dudes be like, oh well, shoot, I can't. Mm-hmm. I can't talk. I can't, I can't do this. And then for some people, it get to the which I I can't ever see myself getting to this point. But some people it get to the point where they'll just end it. I know you've had friends. Yeah. They they uh take their life and stuff. Bro, look. And bro, I'm gonna say this out, bro. Uh the other night, I, I meant to tell you this. And the only reason I'm saying this publicly because I feel like it happened for somebody to hear. Every night we say our prayers, man, our, our you know, wifey, daughters, all together before they go mm-hmm. to bed. Shiloh, she said a prayer and then she was like, Oh, oh, I got one more prayer. And we were like, okay. She said this, bro. A four-year-old out of nowhere said, if anybody wants to be dead, then you should be grateful that you're alive and be happy with your life. And I was like, whoa. And I was like, I don't know who that's for, but I told myself in that moment, I was like, I'm going to say that out loud. I was like, I'm going to post about it. I'm going to tell people about it because I don't know where it's supposed to land. You know what I'm saying? But hey. that was a download that I was like, that's crazy. <laughs> and like, now that we, you know, since hey. you brought that up, I'm like, oh, man, maybe this was the time. And even and even, and even, even when I'm in certain modes, uh, a song that I normally listen to, I listen to it. And I was like, this ain't even the message I need to hear right now. Which in the past it was. It's a song called Don't Stress by Nipsey. Mm. Nipsey Hustle. And the lyrics is, I don't stress out, nigga. Poke my chest out. Weight on my shoulders brings the best out. Mm-hmm. Get it right or you get left out. Like, I get that. But even that, it's like, I don't stress out. Poke my chest out. Weight on my shoulder, bring the best out, and then he even says stuff like Black Sims tell him and stuff. I'm like, yeah, it's cool, but I was like, for what I was feeling at the time, I was like, I need to feel it. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of times you going through things and you like, nah, I'm gonna pick your head up, poke your chest out. I'm right. like, but I stopped doing something that I I remember having a conversation with one of my homegirls last year. I was like, I'm in a mode where whatever emotion I'm feeling. I, I want to feel it because mm-hmm. there's a reason why I'm feeling it. I need to feel it and go through it mm-hmm. versus like pushing through it or working through it or grinding through it or ignoring it or something like that. Yeah. And I feel like that's why I stayed in a, a, a certain funk because I was like, trying my best not to feel it and then also harping on the past of what got me to the mm-hmm. to the issue mm-hmm. and usually i've never been been like that i've always in the past been able to learn from something take what's needed from me like i ain't nothing i can do about it it's happened mm-hmm. go forward but it was like i was staying staying in this Funk, oh, I should have did this, I should have mm-hmm. did that. I think because I didn't give myself enough time to process, like, this is what it feels like. It sucks. Yep. And that didn't happen until I started talking to people. Wee-oo, wee-oo, wee-oo. 
success alert, success alert. Look, they were able to hit this in their business in just a couple months time. What are you waiting on? Get in the room, exposure equals expansion. It's crowded at the top. Click the link in the description right now. Get access to the training, resources, and environment that you need to to grow your business as an entrepreneur, all right? So click the link and I'll see you on our mastermind call this Wednesday. And also, are you getting value from this video so far? If so, let me know in the comments, all right? Now let's get back to it. Yo, Jarvis, close the mask. And then something else too, I wanted to say, say I'm glad I didn't forget this before we wrapped up, y'all. It may not work for y'all, but I feel like every it works for me and people that I've talked to. If y'all going through something, and especially, I think everybody needs to, but especially entrepreneurs, you need to have some type of escapism to where you can avoid and not think about everything for a moment. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying run away from your problems, but that's why I said everybody goes through their problems, but entrepreneur's problem is something different. Mm -hmm. Like it's a different beast that majority of the population won't ever have to battle. Mm -hmm. Like you're, you're choosing this fight. Like we don't have to be entrepreneurs. We could go get in the workforce like everybody else. But you need to have something, whether it's a hobby, because I realize a lot of a lot of my friends and a lot of uh, my family and people that I have like business relationships and stuff, or even just the entrepreneur homies that may not be like real friends, they don't have fun. Right. All they do is work and the stuff that they consider fun may be work. Now, if, if work is your fun, because I know those type of people too. I ain't saying to stop doing it. Like if that's what you truly enjoy doing nonstop, not doing it nonstop is going to make your life worse. Mm -hmm. I'm not one of those people. I need something to where my mind can go somewhere else and not think about the task at hand for a moment in time. Mm -hmm. So for me, that may be going to the, like I love go, like going to the movies, not just watching the movies. Yeah. Like, going to the movies or watching some anime or it might be a video game or something. I got to do something childlike. And when I don't, it be off and my creativeness ain't, mm -hmm. ain't clicking mm -hmm. because I need that. I need that, that clear space in my mind to allow creative thoughts to come in. Mm -hmm. But it's like, if I stay in a constant level of stress, it's like it's not possible for me to think my way into a better situation. Mm -hmm. And I just stay in that situation for longer because I I can't think my way out of something. I've, I've always prided myself on thinking. Mm -hmm. It's like I can't. So it's like I need something. And when I've advised other people, it's work for them too. Like find something to where you can just zone out yeah for sure yeah you got to it's important i know because i remember we had the conversation i know for me it's music and then for other people it may be video games or or working out i know working out work for me too because i it's almost impossible to be like like you like you get yeah. some weight off your chest to be thinking about something like my, yeah. but um but yeah music is the number one for me because it, it's funny like I just thought about it when you said some like child like that's that's child like for me because that was literally like the first thing like before sports like I was like writing or trying to play the piano or something you know what I'm saying like. Yeah, and and, and y'all, and whatever the thing is for you, do it unapologetically. And if anybody in your life is like, why are you doing that? Why are you wasting time on that? You need to be doing Fuck them. Yep. Because they're, because they're going to be, a, a, because they're showing you, especially if you let them know that you literally need this. Mm -hmm. They're fucking with your sanity. Yeah. So I hope this episode didn't scare anybody because the because the the positives outweigh the negatives to me as as an entrepreneur, but I just don't want people to get 
so clouded by what they see on social media mm -hmm. and and think that like god dang it, it's only me why i always go through stuff don't look like nobody else goes through anything yeah because would you would you listen to them if they told you everything you probably would for those that listen to this that's probably why y'all be tapped into me because i share a level of honesty that a lot of other people don't but like I tell people all the time, especially with content, your content is branding and marketing for your business. Mm -hmm. That's what you should look at it as. So that's why nobody shares this stuff. Because it could slow down their business. Yeah, that's like if if Range Rover came on and was like, yeah, we got like the highest cost of service per year for vehicles. Like you're gonna be like, oh, I ain't gonna get no range. <laughs> like, it just and makes... and and even and even just normal human nature, like just basic psychology. You don't share when you fucked up, right? Like just think of y'all. Take business out of it. You and your significant other arguing like crazy. You ain't gonna share that on social media. Yeah. You share the happy times. Mm -hmm. You don't tell people like, hey, y'all, I'm fucked up right now. <laughs> like, share, post, comment, subscribe. And then my life sucks. As soon as as right, soon they, as the uh the argument is posted, everybody like, man, take that down. <laughs> yeah, so it's it's not even it's not even normal, but I just I just want people to to uh not get caught up in social media and if it's possible for y'all. And I know I'm, I only speak to entrepreneurs. Use that shit to build your brand. Use that shit to build your business. Use that shit to drive sales. Don't be on there scrolling all the time. There's a reason why everybody that owns this shit don't have it. Mm -hmm. There's a reason why Mark Zuckerberg will not let his children on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Yep. There's a reason why Mark Zuckerberg is not on Instagram. Can I check? Does he even have a page? I don't believe so. He don't even talk to us. The dude with the glasses be coming on talking to us. You know what I'm talking about? Adam Mazar. Yeah. <laughs> Mark don't talk to nobody but his trainers and the government. <laughs> oh, buddy, because Zuck got Zuck got a Zuck got an Instagram, right? He don't have that many followers for the person that owns it. He only got 12 million followers. I guarantee you he's not on here though. Yeah, I ain't even posting nothing. Like whoever's posting this is is posting. Just like I'd be on Instagram, but somebody else be posting for him. Mm -hmm. But there's a reason why he won't let his kids have it. There's a reason why the the owner of TikTok don't let his kids yeah. on. Yeah, he said, uh, yeah, he, he said they, they, they're not ready. There's a reason why a uh, Bezos ain't on it. There's a reason, there's a reason, like that shit ain't good for your mental health. Yeah. So get on it, scroll maybe if you do, and, and get off of it. Because mm -hmm. the last couple of weeks, I really haven't been on it, period. And like I, even, I, like I haven't even, don't take this advice, I haven't even posted the last couple of weeks. Look, I ain't gonna lie, I've been, I had a moment, I was on it too much. And then I, I, I but, it hit me like, nah, bro, you water. But I'm not saying like don't get on it. Everything's good. It's just like it's just like eating donuts. I don't think donuts are bad for you. I think donuts are bad for you if you eating two dozen every day. Yeah, for sure. I don't think drinking's bad for you, but it is if you sitting there and you drinking, you binge drinking every single day. You have a drink here and there. Cool. Right. Cause even I've never smoked the I've never smoked a cig in my life. But I don't think I think your chances are good if you smoking like every blue moon. Right. Then <laughs> you smoking a pack a day. Yeah. Cause even like those, so, uh, I'm those not coastal saying coastal cities like in like the Mediterranean and stuff would be having like super long life expectancies and stuff, they drink a glass of wine every day. That's what I'm saying. So stuff it stuff in moderation, y'all, but think. 
how like check your check your screen time. The apps they you can open up the apps and it shows you how much time you spent on the app. Mm-hmm. Like look at that and really be like, dang, yeah, that what place. am I doing? And 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 if you're saying that you're an entrepreneur. And you sit there and you see that you're consuming the stuff more than you're producing the stuff, you got a problem. Mm-hmm. That needs to be flipped. Mm-hmm. So if you're sitting there and you on social media for three and a half, four hours a day, ask yourself, hey, how long did I take today to make content? Mm-hmm. But I say, this is what I want to do. But I'm watching everybody else do it. Right. And just and just ask yourself that, and then find find some type of escapism, and find some find some like minded people that are doing the same thing as you, that you can talk to, to realize that you're not the only one going through it. Y'all could join this crowded top community if you want to, but that may not be the spot for you. Find something. But if you're interested in my stuff, y'all can join right now. 47 bucks a month, less than a cup of coffee per day. You get access to all my trainings, resources, systems, and weekly uh, weekly coaching calls with myself and a community of like-minded entrepreneurs all going through the same path. But if that's not, that may not be the place for you. Just find some, find somewhere, find somebody. If y'all starting something up with y'all's group of friends, like have a, maybe have a monthly check-in, like, mm-hmm. Yo, you good or bi monthly or quarterly something? Just just check because that uh because I always say like ninety probably like ninety five percent of all this stuff is mental. Mm-hmm. And if your mental not right, ain't ain't nothing gonna be right. It don't know what you know how to do or what right. systems you have in place or what team you got. If your mind ain't right, because at the end of the day, as an entrepreneur, no matter what business that you're in. We're creative. Mm-hmm. Like it's like an art form. Like I've always wished that I could draw and dance and sing and paint and mm-hmm. stuff like that, right? But still, I'm like, I may be more artistic than than somebody that deems themselves the creator, right? Because I, I feel like they, in the arts world, they like, love that creator word mm-hmm. like i'm a creative mm-hmm. i'm like i feel like entrepreneurs m- might be a little more creative than y'all might be might be might be because most of the creatives can't make no living off of their creations because mm-hmm. they not Creative enough to think of hell. Yeah, yeah, that's real. So, but for those that want to tap in, it's credit top community. Uh, click the link in the description. I see you this Wednesday. For those that don't, find find somebody, man, because because you got to keep your you got to keep your mind right. To and that's the last thing too. You got to keep your mind right to stay in the game. I've realized the point of the game ain't to win it. The point of the game is to play it. And as long as you stay in the game, you win it. The point of business ain't to win. The point of business is to stay in business. And as long as you in business, you ain't out of business. The doors don't, doors ain't closed. All right, we out.